afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at 4 Charlotte Celeste in for Susan Simon this week. Welcome to you. Mm, thank you. Welcome to you. <laughs> thank you. Not a bad day overall? No, mm -mm, not at all. The groundhog, I mean. Yeah. All right. Let's get this going, right? <laughs> we'll see if Jimmy is right, because he did not see his shadow. Right. Which means an early spring. We'll see. Mm -hmm. it. Not this week, that's for sure. Here's what's making news on this Tuesday. We're in for a weather whiplash this week with snow and a big cold snap coming our way. Plus, Wisconsin health officials are focusing on getting more people of color vaccinated. Part of that will be releasing more data about who is getting vaccinated. And the CDC says the total number of people vaccinated for COVID-19 now matches the number of people infected across the country. Dr. Jeff Potoff joins us later in this show to discuss where we are now a year into this pandemic. But first, let's take a look outside. I'll tell you, the sun sure helps. And this is a view <laughs> of what? Yeah, Mark forgot. I don't know. What is that? Oh, I forgot. But Wait, what do you think? Oh, that's a Christmas tree display. Yeah. That's a Christmas tree display on Lake Monona. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it is cool. Wow. But Speaking of cool, mm -hmm. it's going to get cold. I thought you were going to say Dana's cool. Well, she is cool. Thanks, for that. that goes without saying. Uh -huh. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Now, that Christmas tree display, pretty, pretty neat outside. And again, with the sunshine, it's not too bad. I went snowshoeing for the first time today and, like, was burning a sweat up with that sunshine coming through. Looking at our radar right now, things do look really okay outside as far as not having any new precipitation building in. It's that time of year where we have a little more sun at the start of the show. Looking downtown right now, we have a clear blue sky. Temperatures are in the upper 20s with a light breeze for the north northeast at just six miles per hour. So we factor it in wind chill, maybe a little cooler than our actual temperatures for some folks, but uh, not seeing a, a big temperature swing there. Difference between our temps and our, our, our wind chills. We do have several alert days in the forecast as we look ahead through the 10 day. There's possibility for some snow, maybe a little mix early in the day Thursday, and then temperatures are going to get quite cold for the weekend and the start of next week. Those alert days breaking it down just a little more snow accumulation for Thursday. Those overnight low temperatures and afternoon highs for Saturday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday will likely be keeping us below zero with those wind chills. But we'll take a closer look at your 10 day in just a few seconds. Right now on the roads, we're not seeing any major delays. The Beltline actually looks pretty good east and westbound. You're going to need the sunglasses for the drive home with the sunny sky. And the interstate looks good all the way down through Rock County and around Janesville. From Janesville to the Beltline, drive time's about 26 minutes, 16 minutes to get from Sauk City to Middleton and some parade to downtown. A nine minute drive this evening. Again, a little active pattern in the weather office, but we'll take a closer look at that in just a few minutes. Lucky you got out today. Yes. All right, Dana, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. First and four, the seven-day average of COVID-19 cases in Wisconsin continues to drop. A little more than 1,000 cases reported this afternoon. Sadly, 40 more people have died. More than 21,000 people were vaccinated in this last day or so. Now that hospitals are finishing up vaccinating their own employees, they're starting to make a dent in the hundreds of thousands of people 65 and older. As that happens, DHS is gathering more data tracking the ethnicities of those vaccinated. Amanda Quintana has more details on why this is important. Yes, well, this data is not available to you just yet, but DHS says they are working on getting the race and ethnicity data onto their website very soon. Some healthcare systems are prioritizing minority groups who have been disproportionately affected by the virus, including UW Health. Public Health Madison in Dane County has said it's also thinking about prioritizing the African American, Latino, and Native American communities. DHS is also making sure that vaccinators that serve these populations get enough vaccine. I think it's fair to say we will never have done enough and we are recognizing this issue and working on ways that we can increase both access to vaccine and increase information to populations um, who uh, have great need uh, as we move forward. The deputy secretary said although almost all vaccinators requested more vaccine doses than are available to the state, DHS was sure to get federal clinics, which provide a lot of care to African-American and Latino communities, enough vaccine doses. She says that health leaders are working with community organizations trying to spread the message that the vaccine is safe and effective to those minority groups that have been most affected. 
Amanda, thank you. Dane County Executive Joe Parisi says the county has applied to become one of the federal government's COVID-19 vaccination sites. The Biden administration says it is sending more vaccines to states and pharmacies to try to protect as many Americans possible before a more contagious coronavirus spreads. Cars lined up at Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth where a massive drive through COVID-19 vaccination site opened this morning. Officials say the site may be the largest in the country serving as many as 1,000 people an hour. The White House said it will increase the vaccine supply it gives states by another 5% in the coming weeks. And starting next week, it will send an additional 1 million doses per week to select pharmacies across the country. This will provide more sites for people to get vaccinated in their communities. And it's an important component to delivering vaccines equitably. The CDC says so far more than 26 million people in the U.S. have received the first dose of the vaccine and nearly 6 million have received both shots. New cases and hospitalizations are starting to decline. As of this month, the number of U.S. COVID hospitalizations fell below 100,000 for the first time in two months. 11,000 UW Health employees have received at least their first shot of the vaccine. 9,000 have received both doses. The hospital is now shifting its focus to people 65 and older, as well as police officers and firefighters. So far, more than 3,000 people 65 and older have received their vaccine at UW Health. Dr. Matt Anderson says he's anxious to increase distribution. We're preparing to be able to do uh, well upwards of that, you know, five, 6,000 plus here in the coming weeks. So, but we have to have the supply to be able to do it. He says he's disappointed with the vaccine rollout. Dr. Anderson said he hoped there would be more vaccine supply by now. President Biden is trying to gain support for his $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package. Democratic leaders introduced budget resolutions in the House and Senate, paving the way to potentially pass President Biden's coronavirus relief package without support from Senate Republicans. President Biden spoke with Senate Democrats this afternoon and met with a group of Republican senators last evening. Their counterproposal is a third of the size of the administration's $1.9 trillion plan. We are not going to dilute, dither, or delay. The needs of the American people are so demanding. We need to think big, and we need to act quickly. I wouldn't say that we came together on a package tonight. No one expected that in a two-hour meeting. But what we did agree to do is to follow up and talk further. Both sides acknowledge there are areas of common ground, but the White House press secretary says the president will not settle for a package that fails to meet the moment. Two FBI agents were killed and another three were hurt as they served a search warrant in a child exploitation case in South Florida this morning. Police on motorcycles escorted an ambulance carrying the body of an FBI agent to the medical examiner's office. They saluted as their fellow agent, covered with a flag, was taken into the building. A SWAT team stormed an apartment building in a Fort Lauderdale suburb early today. Police say a suspect opened fire and barricaded himself inside his home. Two members of law enforcement will, will not be going home to their families today because they laid down their lives in the ultimate sacrifice, um, making the community they serve safer. Two of the agents who were hurt were taken to a local hospital and are expected to be okay. The FBI says the suspect died. In-person absentee voting begins today, ahead of the February 16th primary election. There's already an unusual amount of interest. Christina Laurie found out why. The Madison, Oregon and Verona clerk offices all say they've never seen anything like this. A record number of people requesting ballots ahead of a spring primary. In Madison, more than 20,000 ballots have gone out so far. Highly unusual for a primary, but the pandemic is likely playing a factor. Maggie McLean from Madison's clerk's office says part of the reason she thinks more people are voting is that they've become more comfortable with the absentee process. 75% of registered voters cast their ballots in the November election, many of them absentee. Um, and many of those folks are requesting ballots for the calendar year. I think it's a holdover and I hope that it's, we, we all hope that it's something that we'll just continue to see. 
Madison is not alone. Voter turnout is already up, get this, more than 1,000% in neighboring Oregon, despite there being only one race up for election. We'll hear from that village's clerk coming up at 6 o'clock. But for now, I'm Christina Laurie in Madison. Christina, thank you. In the meantime, if you have any voting questions like how to find your polling place or see what's on your ballot, head to myvote.wi.gov. Summerfest will go on this year, but later than usual. Milwaukee Summertime Staple will be held the first three weekends in September. Event organizers say they've pushed back the date to give the government and healthcare leaders time to distribute the vaccine. Details are still in the works, but event organizers expect an update on performers soon. The Milwaukee three. Hit one and into the arena as soon as next month. The team says they will try to host between 3,000 and 5,000 fans per game at Pfizer Forum. Normally, the arena holds more than 17,000. Well, today, President Biden will once again focus on immigration. He will sign three executive orders reversing the previous administration's policies. One order will set up a task force to look into reuniting families once separated at the southern border. The president's actions come the same day the Senate will vote on his nominee to lead the Department of Homeland Security. Natalie Brand is at the White House with more. President Biden is taking aim at his predecessor's immigration policies with his latest executive actions. Our country is safer, stronger, and more prosperous with a fair, safe, and orderly immigration system. The president's first executive order will set up a task force to try and locate, identify, and reunite migrant families separated at the southern border. It's emotional for a lot of people for understandable reasons, um, and we uh, need to find out first where all these kids are. A second act will mandate a review of the Trump administration's Remain in Mexico policy that required asylum seekers to wait outside the U.S. while their cases were adjudicated. A third order calls for a review of restrictions made to the legal immigration system over the past four years. Tuesday's orders come on top of several other immigration-related executive actions, including a pause on wall construction at the southern border and measures to protect DACA recipients. The executive orders today won't change anything immediately. Sarah Pierce of the Migration Policy Institute says the Biden administration has set the stage for a larger debate on immigration in Congress. If any president was going to usher immigration reform through Congress, I would like to think it was one who was espousing unity. Some Senate Republicans have already voiced opposition to President Biden's immigration policies and to his Homeland Security pick, Alejandro Mayorkas. He does not deserve Senate confirmation to lead Homeland Security. Hours after the minority leader's criticism, the Senate voted to confirm Mayorkas as the first Latino DHS secretary. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. And Republican Senator Lindsey Graham and Democratic Senator Dick Durbin are working on a narrow bipartisan bill to address immigration issues, particularly so-called dreamers who were brought to the U.S. as children. Well, one of the many heroes of this pandemic has died. Captain Sir Tom Moore, the British World War II veteran who's raised millions for health workers, died today. He tested positive for COVID-19 late last month and was fighting pneumonia. He wasn't vaccinated against COVID-19 because of other medication he was taking. Moore became well known around the world by walking around his garden with the help of a walker. He raised more than $53 million for Britain's National Health Service. He was eventually knighted by Queen Elizabeth. He was 100 years old. That is so sad. Thank you very much. Very kind. But he was a hero. Still to come at four, does it seem the price of your prescription drugs keep going up? Yes, <laughs> that's because they are about 256% higher than the rest of the world. More on that when Live at Four continues. Ready? You're watching News 3 Now, live at 4. off lenses with purchase of a frame. Wisconsin Vision. See more life. My lips get so dry and cracked, I need serious relief. 
That's why I use O'Keefe Slip Repair. It's all day moisture in one use and is guaranteed relief for extremely dry, cracked lips. Also available in O'Keefe's Working Hands. Guaranteed relief for extremely dry, cracked hands. Want to brain better? Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nareva has clinically proven ingredients that fuel five indicators of brain performance. Memory, focus, accuracy, learning, and concentration. Try our new gummies for 30 days and see the difference. Let's say your car needs a new part, like an alternator. You could get just the one part at the typical auto parts store. Or for the same money at rockauto.com, get the alternator plus the belt and tensioner kit you'll need to do the repair right and have money left over to buy lunch. Since 1999, rockauto.com has provided reliably low prices, easy to use website, huge selection of parts, and fast shipping. All the parts your car will ever need, Rock Auto. Look at this human trying to get in shape. Ah, you know what he will get? Muscle pain. Give up. The couch is calling. I say, it's me, the couch. I'm calling. Pain says you can't. Advil says you can. When the chapstick goes on, it's on. Get yours on at chapstick.com. Andrew Larson here with Larson Home Services. Normally, this is the time of year my team would get to meet a lot of you at all the area home shows. But since we can't do that this year, we'd like to take our exhibit on the road and safely and responsibly show you why now is the perfect time to replace your gutters with a new LeafGuard gutter system. They're guaranteed to never clog, so you can keep that ladder in the garage where it belongs. If you ever have an issue, my team will come out and take care of it for free. They're the best. I don't have to worry about uh, the, the gutters getting clogged up with the seeds, the branches, the, the dirt, the, the roof sheddings, and it's just one less worry for me. Love it. And right now, get our home show special. Get free installation labor, free financing for 12 months, and a $100 Visa gift card with your new LeafGuard gutter purchase. Don't wait. Call now to schedule your free estimate. Pfizer is expecting to make $15 billion from its COVID-19 vaccine this year. That guidance came Tuesday during the company's fourth quarter earnings report. It was the first report since the Food and Drug Administration approved the vaccine Pfizer developed with German firm BioNTech. Pfizer says it has shipped 29 million doses to the U.S. and 65 million doses worldwide. Well, the price of prescription drugs continues to rise, and a new study finds the U.S. pays more than most nations. Yeah, the Rand Corporation analyzed prescription costs in 33 nations, including the U.S. They found prices in America are 256% higher on average. Andrew McCauley from the Rand Corporation says other countries negotiate with drug makers, but many U.S. government programs can't do that. There's prohibited by law to negotiate drug prices. Another analysis finds major pharmaceutical companies are raising prices on more than 500 drugs this year, a 4.6% increase overall. Many of those are brand name drugs that companies have exclusive rights to make as opposed to generics. Rand found that America actually pays less for generic drugs than other countries. Well, stocks advanced on Wall Street. The Dow Industrials gained 475 points, closing at 30,687. The Nasdaq added 209 points to the S&P 500 was up 52. Well, still to come at four, I bet you think you have a clean kitchen, mm. right? Think again. Consumer Reports says the kitchen may have the most bacteria than any other room in your house. They have great tips to help in the cleanup coming up after Dana's first horn forecast. Start your year smiling at Aspen Dental with our biggest savings of the season. Now, during the Everyday Smiles event, you can save not 20%, but 30% off your treatment plan. Find exceptional care at every step, unparalleled safety at every visit, and flexible payment options for every budget. Get the services you need for less with our biggest savings of the season. Don't wait. Offer ends soon. Call 1-800-ASPEN-DENTAL or book today at aspendental.com. My body is truly powerful. I have the power to lower my A1C because my body can still make its own insulin. And Trulicity activates my body to release it. Lowering my blood sugar from the first dose 
Once weekly, Trulicity responds when my body needs it 24-7. Trulicity is for type 2 diabetes. It's not insulin. It isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take Trulicity if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Trulicity and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, changes in vision, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Taking Trulicity with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Side effects include indigestion, fatigue, belly pain, decreased appetite, nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting, which can lead to dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I have it within me to lower my A1C. Ask your doctor about Trulicity. Love lower than low prices? Then get more ways to save at Pick and Save, where you can find personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. All for prices that are lower than low. On food that's fresher than fresh. Pick and Save. Fresh for everyone. When it comes to 2020, it's time to wipe the slate clean and get a fresh start now at Herzing University. Earn the degree you need for a lasting career. Herzing is accredited, transfer-friendly, and offers you the personal care and support so important during these times. We'll even waive your enrollment fee. A new year, a new career. You've got a clean slate. Impossible at Herzing. Call or click today. Every year, thousands of Wisconsin residents make the difficult choice between eating or heating their home. So please join News 3 now and support a week of warmth, benefiting the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund. 90 cents of every dollar donated is used to help those in crisis. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the need is now greater than ever. Give the gift of warmth. For more information, visit kwwf.org. Week of Warmth, sponsored by Viridian Homes. Well, take a look at this, or don't, if you have a fear of heights. A pair of fearless climbers tackled what's being called the world's tallest artificial multi-pitch climbing route on Europe's tallest chimney. Towering above a Slovakian power station, the chimney stands 1,181 feet. The holes were pre-placed for the pair, world-class sport climbers, in truly death-defying fashion. They conquered the gargantuan chimney in seven hours and 32 oh. minutes. What? I, I can't even look at this. I can't even look at it. Oh, and, and Danny, yeah. you do a little rock climbing, don't you? I do, yes. All of that looks fantastic have and to try that. terrifying. Oh, my God. Terrifying is right. Wow. I can't even look at it. That is amazing. <laughs> I can tell you, our, our climbing gym here in Madison, Boulders, it is not that tall. Not, yeah. not 1,100 feet? No, no, okay, no. Good. Quite 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 a bit closer to the ground, yes. <laughs> the uh, temperature is going to be kind of frightening, too. It is. Temperatures going down. Rock climbers going up. Temperatures going down. That works. We're expecting snow first and then cold temperatures for the weekend to edge next week. Really cold temperatures for the first time this season. Consecutive days below zero. We'll take a closer look at your full 10 day right after the break. I was picking the boys up after practice when they're like, can we get quick trip? Actually, that was my plan. What would Quick Trip's take-home meals being? As the Quick Trip lady says, freshly made and absolutely delicious. But opportunity knocked. I go, if you let dad give you haircuts, and they say, deal. At Quick Trip, the boys are like spaghetti, chicken tenders, mac and cheese. After an easy dinner, it was time to pay the piper. Dad's like, who's next? A deal's a deal. Quick Trip, we got you covered. Carrier has a complete line of home heating products to keep your family comfortable this winter without burning your budget. With smart temperature management and remote access options, it's easier than ever to control your home's climate. And Carrier energy efficient systems can help reduce utility bills without sacrificing comfort. For more complete comfort and greater peace of mind, turn to your Carrier expert. Harker Heating and We are the Thrivers, women with metastatic breast cancer. Our time for more time has come. 
Living longer is possible and proven in postmenopausal women taking Cascali plus Fulvestrin. In a clinical trial, Cascali plus Fulvestrin helped women live longer with HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer, and it significantly delayed disease progression. Cascali can cause lung problems or an abnormal heartbeat, which can lead to death. It can cause serious skin reactions, liver problems, and low white blood cell counts that may result in severe infections. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including breathing problems, cough, chest pain, a change in your heartbeat, dizziness, yellowing of the skin or eyes, dark urine, tiredness, loss of appetite, abdomen pain, bleeding, bruising, fever, chills, or other symptoms of an infection, a severe or worsening rash, are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeeding. Avoid grapefruit during treatment. Ask your doctor about living longer with Kiskali. We drive everywhere to help our son reach his dream of becoming an elite swimmer. So we enrolled in the Know Your Drive program with American Family Insurance. It gives us discounts for safe driving and other benefits like emergency roadside service, which comes in handy no matter where his dreams take him. With Know Your Drive, save up to 20% and get closer to your dreams. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. It is cold but it is sunny outside. That sunshine making it not too bad as long as you've got a layer or two on. As we take a look at our radar right now, the snow not in the forecast for tonight or tomorrow, but this future track brings it in for us on Thursday and it's going to add on a little more for what we already have on the ground. Overnight, partly cloudy skies. Temperatures will be dropping down to the single digits to start off Wednesday morning, so a chilly start to the day. In the afternoon, again, we'll get a bit of sunshine. High temperatures will likely be in the upper 20s, close to 30 degrees, so very seasonable afternoon expected. But as we look ahead to Wednesday night, it starts to become increasingly likely that we will have a little mixed precipitation late at night, some freezing rain, some sleet and a little bit of snow coming down early in the day on Thursday. And then this transitions over to snow uh, throughout the day. Here's seven, eight o'clock. Some folks should have a pretty smooth drive into work. Others might have a little bit of ice to deal with even that early in the day. By mid late morning, we still have a few freezing mixed spots as temperatures will be in the mid to low 30s. Just hovering right around that area until we transition over to all snow later in the evening and overnight. This clears out overnight Thursday, maybe a few flurries on Friday, but the bulk of the system really comes through on Thursday for us. For Friday, the cold temperatures really start to build in. And general accumulation totals in the three to six inch range throughout southern Wisconsin will see higher amounts to the north. That snow again on top of what we already had on the ground. So so quite a snowpack expected by the end of the week. Ice accumulations could add up just a, a little bit to a few hundredths of an inch. These numbers have, have kind of creeped up on us a little bit over the last day or so. So it does look like we're going to have some slick spots throughout the day on Thursday. So we have an alert day in the forecast because it is going to be a bit of a cleanup effort with the snow, but we're also going to have that light ice accumulation beneath the snow. After that, very cold. It's quite likely in our 6 to 10 day and this 8 to 14 day outlook. Temperatures are going to drop well below average throughout the Midwest. This cold air surges down and really stays with us through the weekend and into the start of next week. So we do have alert days in the forecast for Saturday, Sunday and Monday and Tuesday for all four days. We will see overnight lows below zero. Afternoon highs will not get above the single digits and wind chills will be hovering well below zero as well through the weekend into the start of next week. So bundle up. We are expecting high temperatures tomorrow again. In the upper 20s, close to 30 degrees, partly sunny skies, seasonably cold outside. Alert day for Thursday because of that snow. The mixed precipitation could make things a little slick at times. Friday, snow possible early in the morning, really just a few flurries. Otherwise, breezy with highs in the teens will hold pretty steady through the day, and then we drop below zero early Saturday, again on Sunday, again on Monday, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, and Thursday morning. Afternoon high temperatures will stay well below average, and on top of that, wind chills will be dropping to very bitterly cold levels for the start of the week. So it's going to be a very good weekend to stay inside and watch some football. And next week, if you do, of course, have to spend any time outside, make sure you have plenty of layers on. Yeah, that's getting pretty dangerous. It mm -hmm. is, it is. All, All right. right.
Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. The forecast is a good reminder that not everyone has a warm place to stay. All next week, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund is joining together with News 3 Now to raise money for those who need help paying their heating bills. Tim Brewer is the creator of the fund and joins us now. Welcome to Live at 4, Tim. Hi, Tim. Thank you for having me. All right, so tell us about the uh, amount of calls that you're getting now. Well, as you can imagine, uh, especially with the bitter uh, sub-freezing uh, temperatures around the corner uh, upon us, our organization, which is the principal survival safety net uh, for responding to households who really uh, are spending as much as 60% of their income towards energy costs. And, and, and for them, you know, heat, which is a basic necessity, has become uh, clearly an unaffordable luxury. And then with the uh, economic uh, aftermath of uh, of the um, of COVID crisis, uh, you know, we're seeing somewhere between two to three thousand calls on a daily basis, and uh, many of these households are the elderly, the disabled, and principally those from uh, industries that were hit hardest. You know, the restaurants, the uh, movie theaters, uh, the hotels, people who uh, made barely above minimum wage. And for them, again, heat, which is a basic necessity, has become an unaffordable luxury. We're literally dealing with, what, twice the number of calls today that we were a year ago at this time. I was just going to ask you how, how, how much of an increase in calls you've had. Yeah, we're, we're going to continue to see probably a 40 to 50 percent increase over uh, last year at this time. Fortunately, with our close working relationship with the air utilities uh, and so many other organizations that were involved uh, in collaborating to identify those most at risk. Again, it's not just the people we know about, it's the people that we don't know that really concerns us because we're seeing uh, literally uh, a jump of over 40 or 50% of those folks coming in uh, at a point that they're in a crisis, uh, life-threatening situation. And last year, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund, because of the tremendous generosity of not only the uh, stockholders and the customers of the utilities, uh, but particularly Wisconsinites um, uh, made it possible to provide a survival safety net uh, that provided over 5,500 households in crisis uh, with a hand up to get through uh, the heating season. Tim, have you ever been unable to help a family or an individual because the need was just so great and you just didn't have enough? Well, we're starting to see now and we're monitoring it very closely, particularly as it relates to those who have been victimized by COVID. Again, the uh, vast majority, over 90% of the people who have been coming in, often in a crisis situation, never been behind on a bill uh, or their rent uh, in their life, because we've been able to look at their accounts for the last two or three years when they're coming forward. Uh, right now, because of the generosity of, of Wisconsinites, uh, providing that hand up for somebody truly in need right in their own community, uh, we've been able to literally assist thousands of households where their only uh, income possibly is unemployment or they uh, have uh, little or no income because their hours have been cut, but we're uh, picking up probably 70 or 80% of their energy costs. You know, with that hand up, we're keeping them from falling behind and they're paying based on their legitimate ability. Maybe that's only 50 or $60 a month question is, how long can we continue with this uh, unprecedented increase and it continues to skyrocket going into March or April? Our fear is that we'll uh, be uh, getting into uh, uh, the warmer weather with little or no resources available. At that time, you know, our concern is we have a hard stop in terms of our ability to provide that lifeline for those folks who uh, have no fault of their own, just simply cannot uh, keep their, uh, their, their heat or power on because they have a the legitimate inability and nowhere else to turn. Again, uh, literally, if you have over 5,000 households because of the generous support of Wisconsinites, that's the kind of uh, hand up that was unimaginable even two or three years ago for, for uh, individuals who uh, choose this charity. They appreciate the fact that it's going to people at the highest risk, highest need, those people who really uh, have been affected uh, the greatest when uh, the pandemic has hit all of us. It's hit these folks even harder and with over 90 cents on every dollar 
going towards people in need, but for that generosity over the last uh, uh, several months and going uh, into the next uh, six months is going to be uh, essential if we're going to be able to keep people safely in home. Without, of, without it, I don't know where these people have to turn because we are the last resort. You're doing a spectacular job. It's the week of warmth coming up. We have a link on our website, channel3000.com, where you can donate and help these folks in need. Tim, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, and thank all the generous viewers and the donors who uh, made this uh, survival safety net so successful and has made such a difference for those truly in need. All right, uh, Tim, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, here's a question. What room in your house harbors dangerous bacteria? If you guess the bathroom, you may be wrong. It could also be your kitchen. Consumer Reports has some great tips to ensure that your family stays safe from germs that find their way into your kitchen and cause food poisoning. Leah Lynchai reports. Your hands are essential tools when working in the kitchen, but they can spread dangerous bacteria that can make people sick. Everything you touch, salt and pepper shakers, faucets and refrigerator handles are common surfaces through which bacteria can cause food poisoning. The trick, wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water anytime you switch tasks, cleaning between your fingers and under your nails. Knives and other items that have come into contact with raw meat should be washed with hot soapy water after every use. The juices that collect on cutting boards can contain E. coli and other dangerous bacteria that can make you seriously ill. Regularly, you can wash them with hot soapy water, but to get them really clean, use one tablespoon of unscented liquid bleach in a gallon of water. Rinse the surface, then air dry or pat with clean paper towels. Raw meats, poultry, and seafood that are stored in the upper shelves of your refrigerator can drip down and contaminate the food stored below. Place them in sealed plastic bags or containers and keep them on the bottom shelf. Your fridge can be a haven for harmful bacteria. Wipe up spills immediately with hot soapy water and rinse. And regularly clean the shelves and other interior surfaces to keep your fridge safe. And use a refrigerator thermometer to maintain a 37 degree temperature to slow bacterial growth. The freezer should be no higher than zero. One food safety note, raw meat and eggs aren't the only thing you should cook before eating. Raw flour can carry salmonella and E. coli, pathogens that can be carried from animal waste on the farm all the way through the milling process. So resist the urge to taste batter or cookie dough before they're thoroughly baked. For News 3 Now, this is Leah Lynchide. Consumer Reports advises that cell phones and tablets can easily pick up harmful contaminants from raw, raw ingredients while you cook. So wash your hands before and after checking that online recipe. There's more to come at 4. We'll talk with Dr. Jeff Potoff later on. And tonight at 5, the pandemic has highlighted the need for affordable housing here in Madison. What the mayor says she wants to do about it. We're transforming our annual Toto's Gala into Dane County Humane Society's centennial celebration. We're bringing the animals, cocktails, and success stories right into your home. To reserve your place, visit giveshelter.org. Where can a healthier heart lead you? For people with heart failure taking Entresto, it may lead to a world of possibilities. Entresto is a heart failure medicine prescribed by most cardiologists. It was proven superior at helping people stay alive and out of the hospital. Heart failure can change the structure of your heart, so it may not work as well. Entresto helps improve your heart's ability to pump blood to the body. And with a healthier heart, there's no telling where life may take you. Don't take Entresto if pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or Aliskirin, or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or ARB. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Ask your doctor about Entresto for heart failure. And trust your heart to Entresto. This does not look like a discount sofa. It's not. Everything I sell is quality furniture, and I give you a discount. Bob's discount. Interesting. I remember this for as long as I live. <laughs> Bob, you look so young. Do you remember? It's not discount furniture. It's quality furniture at a discount. Bob's discount. At Bob's discount. Only at Bob's discount furniture. Dear Winter, I'm coming. 
my squad of 15 vehicles with all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive is ready to take you on. Safety's the name of my game, so you better bundle up. Toyota. Right now, get $1,500 customer cash on a new 2021 Highlander Hybrid. Visit Toyota.com to learn more. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. We're transforming our annual Toto's Gala into Dane County Humane Society's centennial celebration. We're bringing the animals, cocktails, and success stories right into your home. To reserve your place, visit GiveShelter.org. Tonight at 5, the Wisconsin Department of Health Services is going to start releasing ethnicity data on who has been vaccinated. We'll have the details at 5. Winter storm system will bring snow, sleet, and freezing rain Thursday, followed by some of the coldest air we've seen in at least a couple of winters. Our first sworn forecast at 5. And ahead at 6, the Sun Prairie School District's racial bias training leader responds to a disturbing middle school assignment. We'll have the latest on that story tonight on News 3 Now at 6. from our Edgewater Sky Cam. Sun is out. Pretty nice out today. Enjoy it. Things are going downhill on Thursday. <laughs> it's time for our segment exploring what's going on in the 608. Today we are taking you to a unique coffee shop that's had to adapt to many changes over the years. Josh Spryder has the story from Madison's East Side. We live in the best neighborhood in the best city anywhere. My customers are amazing. Renee Raspiller can't help but get a little choked up about how thankful she is after the last year. We've got some really special people that are really looking out for us. Her business, Java Cat, has been running drive through only service since the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Inside the coffee shop sits empty of customers, but outside, the line of cars going to Monona Drive is a regular occurrence. Her story, though, doesn't begin here. I always wanted to have a place that felt like Cheers, you know, where we knew your names, we knew about your life. You know, we're not just here to make money. The Madison native and her partner opened the business 15 years ago. And because the area was already saturated with coffee shops at the time, Renee knew they had to be different. Colorful, fun, funky. So they went with a feline theme based off of this poster, which you'll find inside Java Cat today. Uh, I'm assuming you like cats? I have had one cat okay. in my life for a very long time. I liked that cat. They wanted the space to feel like home. I wanted to have a place that was comfortable for everybody, whether you were a professional or a grandma or a young mother. Just wanted a place that was community. She can't wait for the day she can turn her lobby back from storage to open seating again. But for now, she remains grateful to those keeping local businesses in the 608 so great. One of the advantages going through this whole COVID thing is that we had the longevity that we had. And we have a pretty dedicated customer base. That's really helped a lot. In the 608, Josh Breider, News 3 Now. Java Cat's drive through is open every day from 7 in the morning until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, next to 4, the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine continues at a snail's pace. We'll get the latest on the vaccine and the mutant strains of COVID-19 from UW Health's Dr. Jeff Pothoff when Live at 4 continues. than you think. You might just find it right here at the beach. Tell us about this beautiful space and what you want people to know happens inside these beautiful blue walls. So we are a brand new agency that um, opened in August to provide therapy to individuals, children, and couples. Um, we provide mental health treatment, AODA, which is our substance um, treatment. Um, and we just wanted to open up and provide quality treatment to the community and the surrounding areas. I had experienced a counselor that had really made a difference for me uh, when I was in treatment. And I'm not sure without, without him if I would have made it. So I just, I kind of wanted, wanted to give back. Well, I'm, I'm a clinical substance abuse counselor. I've been in the field for 17 years. Uh, I'm in recovery myself. 
um, which has helped me um, connect with my clients. Um, it's a really nice thing when you know they, they're, they're struggling and, and I can say, hey, I've been there too, and let's work on this together. What I try to do and what we try to do is just to kind of help steer the clients in their recovery process. Recovery isn't a, isn't a straight line. It, it's not a linear arrow. It's, it's, there's ups and downs. And it, don't get too down on yourself if you happen to have a, a down day or a down week. Just try and work through it the best you can. Try and stay positive and uh, hopefully reach out to somebody before you, before you use. From the beach in New Glarus, I'm Emmy Fink, and you're Buzz into Madison. The ups and downs of frequent mood swings can take you to deep depressive lows, or give you unusually high energy, even when depressed. Overwhelmed by bipolar one? Ask about Vralar. Some medicines only treat the lows or highs. Fralar effectively treats depression, acute manic, and mixed episodes of bipolar 1 in adults. Full spectrum relief for all bipolar 1 symptoms with just one pill once a day. Elderly patients with dementia-related psychosis have an increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor about unusual changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, which may mean a life-threatening reaction, or uncontrollable muscle movements, which may be permanent. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. High cholesterol and weight gain, high blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death, may occur. Movement dysfunction, sleepiness, and stomach issues are common side effects. When Bipolar 1 overwhelms, Vralar helps smooth the ups and downs. Right now, things are looking fairly smooth on the roads throughout Dane County, east and westbound on the Beltline. We aren't seeing any hiccups. Downtown Madison, there are a few stop-and-go spots, but... No accidents to report this evening. That's always good news. Downtown Janesville also looks pretty smooth. From Janesville to the Beltline, 26 minutes, 16 minutes to get from Sox City to Middleton and some prairie to downtown. A quick nine-minute drive this evening. That's a quick look at traffic. All right, Dana, thank you. One of the best places in the world to celebrate Carnival is Venice, Italy. But the city stands empty as the coronavirus outbreak casts its shadow on what's normally a crowded Carnival season. Thousands of people from all over the world would have visited the city, crowded into St. Mark's Square, the alleys, and the Canals. The carnival usually kicks off with a spectacular water parade and artists in costumes, but none of that is happening this year. Mm. Hopefully next year. Yes. The U.S. has seen a decline in coronavirus cases, but doctors warn we still have a long way to go. UW Health's Dr. Jeff Pothoff joins us now for our weekly update. Welcome back to the show. Welcome, doctor. Good afternoon. So what can you tell us how we, we stand this week compared to when we spoke last week? You know, numbers still look pretty good. We continue to see a slow decrease in the number of new cases. Uh, we're seeing hospitalizations uh, slow down in most of the state, um, for the most part, fairly stable here in Dane County. Uh, so in, in general, good news. Uh, we're doing pretty well here in Wisconsin. Uh, vaccine rollout continues. Uh, we've got those variants that, you know, could give us a little bit of trouble, but uh, uh, things don't look so bad right now today here in Wisconsin. How do you account for the declining numbers? You know, it's hard to say. It's probably multifactorial. I think uh, part of it is when we got hit so hard with the disease back in late November, uh, I think people get a more firsthand experience with the disease. Either they themselves had it or they know someone who had it. Uh, and I think that starts to change decision making around what people are willing to do as far as take on risk related to COVID. Uh, and that's probably a big part of it. Um, can you talk about uh, Johnson & Johnson's vaccine? Yeah, I think this is important. So. You know, when I first heard the information, you hear something like, you know, the, the vaccine is effective, you know, 60%, 70% effective. Uh, and you start to think to yourself, you know what, like, why would I get that one when there's Moderna and Pfizer at 95% effective? Uh, and I think, you know, we have to look at that ultimate metric, which is, you know, when we get a vaccine, what is it that we're trying to prevent? It's really preventing severe sickness that lands me in the hospital or ends up killing me. Uh, and we look at all three of these vaccines, they all do a really good job at that. Uh, if you get these vaccines, you're likely not to get sick enough to go to the hospital, you're probably not going to die. And I think most of us, if given the choice between, say, a Johnson & Johnson vaccine that might be available three or four months before I can get a Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, uh, would take, you know, a slightly increased chance of having some mild symptoms, uh, but protect yourself from getting really sick uh, or dying, which would be a risk you'd take if you're unvaccinated at all. Could you get the Johnson & Johnson and then when the other one's available, get that one? 
Yeah, that would probably be a, a scenario, uh, especially you know, later on. I think what we'll see with some of these mRNA vaccines is they'll be tweaked to better match against these variants or other strains of the virus that we see, uh, just because it's fairly easy to, to change those vaccines. Uh, so that would probably be a doable a doable thing. Are there any other vaccines that are you know coming down the pipeline here that can also you know just boost up the supply? Yeah, there's also the AstraZeneca one that's still out there. It's approved for use in the United Kingdom and uh, in India, uh, not yet approved here in the United States. They haven't submitted that emergency use authorization. Uh, there's also a vaccine out there, Novavax, uh, which is uh, getting approval in some other parts of the world. So uh, there, are, there are a few out there that are still waiting to be approved. And anything that increases our supply of vaccine is a really good thing right now because that does seem to be the bottleneck or the pinch point for us getting vaccinated quickly is going to be vaccine that's available for health systems and other vaccinators to inject. What are the, do you think this is going to be like a, a yearly thing, sort of like a flu shot, you get a COVID shot every year? Hard to know. I think two things we need to understand. One, how long does immunity last when you get vaccinated? Uh, for the most part, these studies are ongoing. We'll have the answer to that. Uh, and then the other thing that'll play into that is, you know, how many different strains or mutations do we see? If we start to see mutations that defeat vaccines, we'll need booster vaccines that account for that. Uh, so I think it's possible, but just hard to say right now whether that'll be what happens in the future. How has morale been over at UW Health now that, you know, you've got a year under your belt, um, your staff, your, your frontline workers have been vaccinated or are getting vaccinated. You guys have just been, you know, burning the midnight oil forever. How is everybody feeling now? Yeah, you know, I think we're in a better place. You know, volumes are still really high, not necessarily COVID volumes. Those have piped down, but uh, other patients are certainly seeking care and the hospitals are very full. But, um, you know, there's just peace of mind that comes with being vaccinated, uh, knowing that uh, you have some protection against this disease where, you know, we've seen just how awful it can be to people. Uh, and uh, with COVID volumes being a little bit lower, that gives folks some breathing room. There isn't this anxiety about what to do with that next patient that comes in with COVID. Uh, so much better position right now than we were, say, into November, where things were really dicey. We can't take the, the pedal off the or foot off the gas pedal as of yet, though. We're not out of the woods. Right. I think that's an important message. You know, one thing we worried about is with all this good news, it gets easy to think that this pandemic is over and uh, we all want to get back to, you know, 2019 life. Uh, but not yet. We still have a lot of vaccine that has to get out there. There's still COVID in our communities. People are getting sick. So reasonable to think about what life might look like in the next few months, but not able to do it yet. We still need to stay masked. We should distance, avoid those large and somewhat small gatherings for just a little bit longer. Absolutely. Doctor, good to see you again. We'll talk to you next week. You bet. We'll have a final check your forecast coming up. With Herzing University's Everywhere Classroom, you can earn a degree in today's hottest fields online. For a limited time, we'll waive your enrollment fee. See what your career can turn into. I'm possible at Herzing. Call or click today. Are your windows drafty, broken, or your energy bills on the rise? The Champion family is here to help you stay comfortable in your home all year long. Right now, buy two windows, get two free. Call now or download our free buyer's guide at getchampionwindows.com today. get them. Okay, we have to be very subtle about asking like this. Like this? No, like this. Actually, you don't have to do any of that. Switch and get the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G for free. Even without the... You would have gotten it anyway. Cool. Get the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G free with no hidden requirements. U.S. Cellular. Wipe the slate clean for 2020 and start on a lasting career at Herzing University. We'll even waive your enrollment fee. A new year, a new career. It's possible. I'm possible at Herzing. Call or click today.
Wednesday morning, the Wisconsin Union's Winter Carnival is kicking off. We'll fill you in on all of the fun events going on this week, plus how they're adjusting to the pandemic. We'll see you starting at 4.30 on News 3 Now this morning. Waking up to stuff like this should never be a surprise. Download the Channel 3000 First Warn app and be ready for whatever Mother Nature throws our way. We have several alert days in the forecast for the next 10 days. Thursday, we have snow building in, some ice accumulation expected along with that. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, very cold with wind chills staying well below zero. All right, Dana, thank you. We'll be right back. Andrew Larson here with Larson Home Services. Normally, this is the time of year my team would get to meet a lot of you at all the area home shows. But since we can't do that this year, we'd like to take our exhibit on the road and safely and responsibly show you why now is the perfect time to replace your gutters with a new LeafGuard gutter system. They're guaranteed to never clog, so you can keep that ladder in the garage where it belongs. If you ever have an issue, my team will come out and take care of it for free. They're the best. I don't have to worry about about the, the gutters getting clogged up with the seeds, the branches, the, the dirt, the, the roof sheddings, and it's just one less worry for me. Love it. And right now, get our home show special. Get free installation labor, free financing for 12 months, and a $100 Visa gift card with your new LeafGuard gutter purchase. Don't wait. Call now to schedule your free estimate. To most people, the idea of fighting is unpleasant, but sometimes it's necessary to fight. If you or your family has been injured, you'll want a good law firm on your side to make things right again. Habish, Habish & Rotier. We fight for what's right. Attic Angel Community has earned a reputation as the one and only, but what's so memorable to the people who live here? It's good local heart. Interesting friends. The view from my window. Continuing education. The food. The amazing art studio. Happy hour. There are many reasons to love Attic Angel community, but there's just one Attic Angel. Is your credit score getting in the way of the things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit offer fast and flexible lending. Borrow up to $10,000 and choose repayment terms that work for you. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. about 40% off lenses with purchase of a frame. Wisconsin Vision. See more life. In today's final touch, no space for a garden? Well, just hang it on the wall. The Spanish city of Santa Ana has created the largest indoor vertical garden in Europe. It's part of a renovation project of an abandoned tobacco warehouse at the port. The huge vertical garden is made up of 6,028 square feet of